Hey everybody, it's Daryl from Big Fish Football. How are we doing today? Today is my first mock draft, my one and only mock draft on Big Fish Football. And I hope you like it. But let's get right to it. First pick, no brainer. I mean, he helped organize his pro day and Urban Meyer organized Trevor Lawrence's pro day, organized his surgery. I think maybe the Jaguar doctors may have even been in on the surgery. It's Trevor Lawrence. No brainer. I think if nobody knew anything about any of these guys and just seen their pro days, it'd be Trey Lance. But Trevor Lawrence has a track record in the national championship ring to go with it. <clears throat> to me, he's Peyton Manning. So Trevor Lawrence to Jacksonville. New York Jets, Zach Wilson. They traded away Sam Darnold. He had the greatest pro day I ever seen, ever saw. No doubt about it. He made throws while on the run that were just ridiculous. So Zach Wilson, number two to the Jets. Number three, Justin Fields. This is a no-brainer. This talk about they gave up all these picks for Mac Wilson. Why? Why would they give up all these picks for Mac Wilson? It's quite possible they could have got him when they were going to pick originally. I think, what, 12? So, we'll have to see. But I think it should be Justin Fields. I have a feeling it might not be. Justin Fields is the best athlete at quarterback. So, Justin Fields should be the guy. San Francisco, I don't know. I think this Mac, Will or Mac Jones talk is just a smokescreen. I think they're going to take Justin Fields. They made a huge deal coming to his pro day. They were almost a part of it, the San Francisco coaching staff. So I say Justin Fields at number three to San Francisco. Number four, best player in his draft, Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. Heisman could have been a Heisman winner. I mean, just unbelievable player. So Atlanta, that's another dimension, and that'll open up the lanes, passing lanes for Julio Jones, and Calvin Ridley. I look for both of them to have explosive years because ugh, Matt Ryan, he could be, this could be a renaissance in his career. I really believe that. Pick number five, Cincinnati Bengals, another no-brainer. Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. You had the number one pick last year. You took Joe Burrow. Now you need to get somebody to protect Joe Burrow. So who better than the best offensive tackle in this draft? No-brainer. Absolute no-brainer. Number six, Jamar Chase. 2019 Fred Blitnikoff winner. Best receiver in this draft, in my opinion. I know that the Heisman Trophy winner came from Alabama, but had he played with a good supporting cast around him, I think that he would have had an even better year. So, Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU, He's going to Miami, and that should help get their offense into another dimension. Detroit Lions, Mika Parsons, Penn State. First defensive player off my board, best defensive player in this draft. He's a killing machine here in Pennsylvania. I had the, I was fortunate to watch almost all of Penn State's games. Yeah, good player, dominant player. And I think that he could be the leader of the Detroit Lions defense for years to come. Number eight, Carolina Panthers. Rashawn Slater, offensive guard, offensive tackle, Northwestern. Versatile guy, maybe too big to play center, but offensive guard, offensive tackle to protect Sam Darnold, who I think will be a great player if he has some time to throw the ball and he's not running for his life like he was with the Jets. Number nine, Drew Lock era ends. Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Drew Locke is going to be like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Career backup, can come in and start for a stretch, but he's just not a franchise quarterback. Just not a franchise quarterback. So Trey Lance, you know, great athlete, good arm. I think he could be the guy that Denver has been looking for since the day Peyton Manning retired. Number 10, Dallas Cowboys. Patrick Sertain, the second. Cornerback out of Alabama. His dad was a great defensive back, and I think he could be better. He could be better. 
So Dallas needs defense, folks. They need defense desperately. Their offense, they're who's who on offense. They need defense now. It's just somebody's got ingrained in Jerry Jones' head that they need defense. Patrick Sertain, Alabama to the Cowboys. Number 11, New York Giants, Jalen Waddle, wide receiver, Alabama. With Kenny Galladay, this could be a deadly, deadly combo. This could almost be like Elvin Harper and Michael Irvin in the 90s Cowboys. I think there's that potential. There is that potential. I think Kenny Galladay is a great player. I think he got screwed because of COVID and the cap went down and all that stuff. And I think he, normal year, him and guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, they get a whole lot more than they did. So Kenny Galladay and Jalen Waddle, wide receiver Alabama, New York Giants. Daniel Jones has a breakout year and proves he's a franchise quarterback. Philadelphia Eagles also take another Alabama wide receiver. Devonta Smith, great player, great receivers. No wonder Mac Jones had such a great year with those receivers. I know I, you put those receivers on Pitt. Kenny Pickett has a great year. So, yeah, Mac Jones, he, he kind of all that Mac Jones hype kind of burns me because I think you put him in a system and he's just another guy. Number 13, LA Chargers. They'll take Elijah Vera Tucker from USC. Offensive guard, offensive tackle. I think they'll want him to be an offensive tackle. I think that this is a perfect fit. He played in LA. He knows all about LA. This is a perfect fit. And you've got a franchise quarterback, Justin Herbert. He proved it. So you want to give him everything he needs in protection, players, everything. 14th pick, Minnesota Vikings. They take J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. His dad, Joe, was a great player. I think he'll be even better. But Joe Horn was a wide receiver. Joe Horn gets a bad rap because he uh, took a phone out of a goalpost pad. So what? He's a great player. He's fun to watch. Fun to watch. He could catch anything, had great speed, and his son has great speed. So J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. And it's, it's Mike Zimmer. It's going to be defense. Pick number 15, New England Patriots. This is where Belichick gets the last laugh. And all that Mac Jones hype backfires on Mac Jones. And he falls to the 15th pick. But he gets in a great situation with Josh McDaniels. Great coaching staff. He'll sit this year because I think Cam Newton's going to play hell or high water. I think he will be the quarterback. But Mac Jones has a year to sit and watch a former NFL MVP and how he gets ready and how the Patriots get ready for the game. Number 16, Arizona Cardinals. Jeremiah Owasu, outside linebacker, Notre Dame. Best defensive player on Notre Dame. Made Notre, Dame, made Notre Dame relevant this year as far as I'm concerned. Great player. He'll make an impact on a must-win year for Cliff Kingsbury. I don't think that Kingsbury can miss the playoffs for a third straight year. And I don't think Steve Kime, their GM, can miss the play. I look for, if they don't make, if the Arizona Cardinals don't make the playoffs, Steve Kime's gone, and pretty Cliff, he's gone too. Las Vegas Raiders. What do they need more than anything? They need an ed ru edge rushers on defense. Max Crosby's pretty good, but he's not elite. Jalen Phillips, defensive end out of Miami, he could be elite. He could be elite. So it's a no-brainer. The Raiders, they need edge help. They need pass rush. Jalen Phillips fits the bill. Number 18, Miami Dolphins second pick. Now they're going to go defense, and they're going to take Zavin Collins, linebacker out of Tulsa. And I just think, Miami, you're right there. You're right there, and you're going to be, it's going to be like the 90s again. You're going to be battling out with Buffalo for the division championship every single year. So take one of each. You've got your quarterback. 
A lot of people could have Najee Harris or Travis Etienne. That's way too high for Travis Etienne. At the end of this video, I'll tell you where I think Travis Etienne is going to go. Pick 19, Washington football team, or whatever name they're going to be by this time the season starts, it seems like. Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle, Michigan. Good player. Good player. Hey, Michigan had a tough year, but this is a good year for offensive tackles in the first round. Good year. Jalen Mayfield won't disappoint. He could be on your on your corner for your, corner of your offensive line for years to come. Chicago Bears at 20. They're going to add to a once great defense with, with a new defensive coordinator attempting to make it great again. Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. He doesn't get the hype because his dad wasn't a famous NFL player. But Caleb Farley is just as good as the other two quarter, cornerbacks I just mentioned. So look for him to come in, start immediately. Number 21, Indianapolis Colts. And the offensive line is good, but it can be better. So they're going to add an offensive tackle. Christian Derisaw, Virginia Tech. And I think that, man, they'll be able to run the ball. Carson Wentz will have a great season. You'll see the real Carson Wentz. The once NFL MVP, had he not tore his knee up the year the Eagles won the Super Bowl, you're going to see that guy again with Frank Wright. And a good offensive line, good running game, great receivers. You're going to see the real Carson Wentz. And this is another piece to that puzzle. Number 22, Tennessee Titans. Jumman Davis, linebacker, Kentucky. This has to be a defensive pick. The Tennessee defense, they should have been a Super Bowl contender. They lost the AFC Championship in 2019. Should have went to the next, at least got back to it. But their defense took not just one step back, they took many steps back. And they were an Achilles heel for they were an Achilles heel for the Tennessee Titans. So Jamin Davis, linebacker, Kentucky, they desperately need the help. Desperately. 23, New York Jets second pick. Quiddy Pay, defensive end, Michigan. The Jets need everything. The Jets need everything. And they could take Travis Etienne in this spot. They could take Najee Harris in this spot. <clears throat> but you got the quarterback. Now get a guy that can be the leader of your defense for years to come. And that's Quiddy Pay. And his story's great. About his family coming over here from Africa. I mean, wish him nothing but the best. I think he's going to be a great player in the NFL. And it's New York. You know, you win in New York and you're God. I mean, let's face it. Just as Joe Namath. Joe Namath, Hall of Famer, he lives he, near here, in, he grew up here in Beaver Falls, about 40 miles from where I live here in Latrobe, but he's a legend, and I don't, had he went to the Cardinals, like the NFL drafted, the St. Louis Cardinals drafted him, I don't think we're talking the same story about Joe Namath. I think we're, oh, Joe Namath, that guy, that great quarterback that Alabama had, and I think that'd be it. Pittsburgh Steelers at 24. They're gonna take they haven't taken a running back in the first round since they took Richard Mendenhall. This year they're gonna take Najee Harris from Alabama. He is, I think, that guy that Steelers have been looking for since the day Jerome Bettis hoisted the Super Bowl trophy in Super Bowl 40 and announced his retirement. Yeah, I understand it's been 16 years, but you know, we look for Terry Bradshaw's replacement for almost 20 years. And found him in Ben Roethlisberger. I think Najee Harris would be that guy. And he just forced Ben to have confidence turning around, handing off the ball. James Conner was a great player for the Steelers. Good player, not great. And the problem, he couldn't be great. He was great in college. The problem is he got to the pros and he's always hurt. Always hurt. So Najee Harris, running back, Steelers, and... If they win and he plays well, he'll be a superhero here in Pittsburgh. Jacksonville Jaguars, second pick. You've got the quarterback. Now let's get somebody to protect him. Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle, Oklahoma State. No-brainer. you got Trevor Lawrence, big kid, moves well, 
but why not make it so he doesn't have to move so much and get Tevin Jenkins offensive tackle Oklahoma State. Cleveland Browns. I have them. I know they got Jadavion Clowney. It's a one-year deal. He's a renter player. He's going to do that his entire career. He's going to go from team to team. And they're going to take Gregory Rousseau, defensive end Miami. He was on the other side of uh, Jalen Phillips. You know, he does good on the other side of being a great player. Makes him a great player himself. If he's on the other side... A guy like Miles Garrett, it could be deadly. It could be deadly. Even more deadly. I look for him. If the Browns draft him, Clowney will get hurt. Rousseau will come in. And, you know, Clowney won't get his job back, and then they'll say goodbye to him at the end of the year like every other team does. Let's face it. 27, Baltimore Ravens. What do the Ravens need more than anything? Wide receivers. I don't think Hollywood Brown is a bust. I just, Lamar Jackson's got to do a better job of getting the ball to the receivers. I think you put Hollywood Brown on Tampa Bay. You put him on New Orleans last year. You put him on, oh, the Bills. I think he's one of the best receivers in the league. He has got speed to just give away, just to burn off. But he needs somebody to help him get open. That's Kadarius Tony, wide receiver out of Florida. And I think that AFC North, that was only a two-team division for years and years and years, it's now a four-team division. And the Steelers maybe end up being the worst team in the division. We'll have to see. 28, New Orleans Saints. They're going to take a defensive tackle. Levi... On with Cirque, Washington. If I said his name wrong, I apologize. But tremendous pro day, killing machine, clog up blockers so that the linebackers can tackle the ball carrier. And that's that's all you're looking for in a defensive tackle. If you ever look at defensive tackle stats in the NFL, they don't make they don't have a tremendous amount of tackles. But if they're a good defensive line, if they're a good defensive lineman. The linebackers have a tremendous amount of tackles. Pick 29, Green Bay Packers. They're finally going to get Aaron Rodgers some help. Finally. Elijah Moore, wide receiver, Ole Miss. This has to be the year because I have a feeling this could be Aaron Rodgers' last year in Green Bay. I just think he wants to leave and... The Packers are just messing with him at this point. I can't believe. Yeah, you have Bart Starr and you have Brett Favre, but <clears throat> talent-wise, to me, he's the best of the three, the, the big three quarterbacks the Packers have had in their franchise history. So you're going to get him some help, and you're going for it this year because this is probably going to be the last one. Number 30, Buffalo Bills. Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. To me... You cannot go wrong with an Ohio State lineman. Cannot go wrong with him. And I have no issue with that. He had a good pro day. A lot of bench press reps. He'll play for years protecting Josh Allen. Number 31. Kansas City Chiefs. They need defense. Proved that in the Super Bowl. Joe Tryon. Defensive end Washington. I think that Joe Tryon will end up being one of the best edge guys in this draft when it's all said and done. When we look back on it, he'll be one of the best. Last but not least, the Super Bowl champions, Trevin Moring, safety out of TCU. What did Tampa Bay really need? I think that they need nickel-dime, plug-and-play guys that can come in, backups, stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tampa should no be no a no-brainer for a Super Bowl contender again. So add a defensive player. They don't need any offensive players. Hell, they're making Antonio Brown sign to their price, so they're not going to sign him. That tells me they don't really need a lot of offense. So add a defensive player 
or trade that pick away for other picks in the future. Now, that's my 32 picks. I said halfway through I was going to tell you where Travis Etienne goes. Travis Etienne is going to go 34 to the Jets. And I'm sure he'll be disappointed because I know that there was a lot of talk. He really wants to go to the Jets, and I think that he thought he'd be the 20, he thinking he could be the 23rd pick. He's going to be the 34th pick. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. I think that he's versatile. He catch the ball. I think he'll catch more than run, maybe. You know, in that. Kyle Shanahan style offense are going to run in New York, West Coast, whatever. It's so many different versions of the West Coast, I don't even think they call it the West Coast anymore. So that's it for my mock draft. Tell me what you think. Give me a like and subscribe and comment. I love the comments and I want to thank all my new subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. So thanks a lot and have a great day. And I'll make comments during the draft in 11 days. Letting you know, oh, my pick's right. Is it not right? Was I way off base? We'll have to see. But you guys, have a great night. Me and my son are going to Long John Silver's. Have a good one.